all three of us out. We've got Amanda and we've got Wigan on camera. And the steps are that long. We actually need to take a minute break because we're knackered and we're actually walking down the steps. So God knows what it's going to be like um, when we finish filming Most Haunted, when we've been working for 24 hours. Wiggins outside now, just getting some outside shots because it's a fantastic day and we're just trying to work as hard as we can so tomorrow when we do arrive um, the day will be a bit easier for us uh, because we'll have all the pieces to camera to do and, and whatnot uh, because all those steps they killed us walking down and we've got to walk back, back up them again later. <laughs> you might and have then... had the helicopter lift back up. We might. Should have had. Really? Well yeah, you oh. could have had. What? Why didn't we then? Ah, that's good exercise. Oh. <laughs> you'll only be doing it two or three days, and next week, no matter where you are, you'll be thinking of the lovely weather here and the steps. That's right, yeah. And you enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, at the minute, I'm just getting general shots. I'm getting. If uh, the editors will just kindly show you what I'm doing now, uh, I should be on this side of the screen, and my shot should be on this side of the screen. I'm getting a lovely focus pull from the leaves to the ocean in the background. From the leaves on the floor? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm seeing from those leaves yes, there. Right, we're going to pull focus through there to there. Oh, you're not just a pretty face, Wigan, no. are you? No. So, if, 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 so you should see it now on the right-hand side of your screen. No pressure. No pressure, editors. <laughs> <laughs> Little did we know that the weather was definitely going to take a turn for the worse, which would leave our equipment, and very nearly us, stranded for over a week, as the helicopter would be unable to fly due to the continuing stormy conditions. I'm tired! possibility we may not get back up but that's not a problem as long as the show gets done some of the, some the steps are stone further down so they will be slipping steps are quite, they're not that, they're kind of like that, as you sort of are pushing you forward. Um, the weird thing is, is the guy just before he went down, I didn't tell the crew, but um, if I, the only person we knew about it was Stuart, so we, the guy said, I don't think I can let you down. But I said, well, what do you mean you can't let us down? He said, well, if this was open to the public, I'd have shut it today. It's too dangerous, it's too windy. And Stuart and I just looked at each other and said, you know, we're going to are we going to pull out now? We've done scary things and this, we've done bigger things than that. So uh, it couldn't have been that bad because we're all down here and no one's dead. Yeah. 
The last time a witness wins like this were at uh, Suter Lighthouse in uh, South Shields. Um, but this is a lot more intense. This. I mean, holy shit, I mean, I was nearly blown off my feet. I nearly lost the camera for each other. I was such a kid. Well, I'm childish, yeah, but not such a kid. But, um, tell them where we've just been. Yeah. Tell them where me and, Je me and you and Jeff have just been. Hey, we've just been to the stock. Come in, come on. Come on. Show you where we've just been. We have literally just walked life and limb in hand. Through here. I'm not doing it again, my boy. No. Right to the top. And actually goes another staircase. And we just went right to the top. We actually jumped out. Well, we didn't jump out, we walked out um, at the top. And it's, it's, it's so windy up there, it, it almost blows you off the top. And it's funny because you only get to one part and you get wet. So, of course, I sent Jeff there first. He's new. It's his fault on me. He taught me. Right, here we are, we're in the engine room now. Uh, me, myself and Jeff. And, uh, me, myself and me, Jeff. Me, myself and, Jeff. Jeff and I. Yeah, we've just set up um, all the lights and we've got, we've got three cameras because we're going to do Yvette and Kieran's interview, uh, which is very rare. We normally do it later on through the day, but this is going to be our first job. So it's literally, it took us, what, five minutes, if that, just to get this set up. Yeah. Well, it was though. No, you know, it's, it, was very it takes easy. a lot of thought goes into this. It's not just put the lights up. <laughs> no. It's up five As you can see, it's, it looks well. Um, so we're just going to wait for Kieran to have the makeup done, and then we'll start rolling. The walk was interesting. I'm going to just calm, calm my breath. I've just had to send, um, I've said to Owen, there's no point. We can't safely get a jib outside. It's just too windy. And you can't get inside because it's too small. So it's going home with a fat paycheck for doing nothing. Similar to Kieran. We've got the Jimmy Jib guy here at the moment. Can you do any stuff today? Or? No. I'm just about to run away. There you go. You're going home. Mm. So, yeah, so we brought all this gear from Manchester, loaded up the van, and we're not even going to use it now. <laughs> yeah. Catch you later. Take care. Um, it's going to be outside. There's a, there's a, a little cottage thing outside. Mm. There's activity oh, there. That's how we do it. Jeff's trying to get away with doing as little as possible already. He's only been here for and literally he's not done anything. Is this a first for you? Have you ever investigated a lighthouse before? I've never ever investigated a lighthouse. I've never even visited one, so I'm very excited to be here. I think with any location, though, there's, wherever there's a history of phenomena, it's always spontaneous. We don't know if when we do an investigation, it's going to produce the goods. We've just got to treat it like any normal investigation to see what happens. Because of where we are and the number of shipwrecks that occur, there is this association with death with negative emotion around the lighthouse. You happy? I'm happy. I'm happy. You happy? Words, words are okay. Happy? Happy. I'm happy, you're happy, we're all happy. We're just doing an eyewitness in a minute. But what we're doing, it's important to help is I'm going to get the background. I'm going to get the background 
of the rock face and the uh, steam. So you're going to have the cam on pretty low, so it picks that up. But then that means you're going to have a lot of light in here to bring up the eyewitness and the uh, organ. That might be fine, obviously. Well, once it went to stand in, Brayden's got to stand in now. I'm not going to put makeup on it, but I'm just going to just take the shine off for a bit. Don't shine off my face, mate. Yeah. You see this here, Ian. I want to try and get rid of that there, so we might have just done that. Okay. You want to cut out? Okay. My name is David Stack. I'm the tour guide here for the lighthouse, which means, in effect, we take people around the lighthouse explain to them how it works, a bit of the history of it, uh, explanation of the birds and any other questions that they may have. After the vigil last night, uh, I was getting ready this morning and I noticed in the, the mirror in the bathroom, remember I had a real pain at one point just around here on my side and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. Well, I had still got the pain this morning and I felt a bit of a lump and just here on my back, I don't know if you can see it, it's a big bruise. Can you see it? There. And it looks... It looks to me, it's really small. It looks like a real jab, which is what I felt. I felt that and then it went down. But there's a bruise now. I mean, I was talking to Kieran about it. I think he said, well, you may be fail or put, but you would have noticed it. And the only time I actually felt any pain like that was last night during the vigil. So who knows, was it unseen hands? Warm and warm. The, uh, salty, the salty sea air. Humid. Is that it? So is it just standing here? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to yeah. tell you. Oh, I'm going to turn this little light on. Just <laughs> That's what makes it. And action! There have been many deaths in and around the lighthouse, from families who have lived and worked here to shipwreck victims and climbers. So it's no wonder that many of the souls are said to roam all over this place. One of our difficulties tonight will be separating the activity from the ghosts and who is doing what, and more importantly, why. Fantastic, you have a brilliant. That was brilliant. Where we were standing, everybody was, was towards the door, and I felt something come f past me and just land like that, right by my feet. I didn't know what it was, and I looked round, shone a torch, and there it was. And I picked it up, it was cold to the touch, and then we put the thermal imager on it, and then Kieran could see my fingerprints, the heat from my fingerprints, but no, no other. So that to me proves that no one could have had it in their hands and thrown it, because we would have picked those finger marks up, the heat from that, on the thermal imaging camera. <laughs> I mean, Jeff, Kath, and Wigan in the middle, 
and the rest of you guys down at the bottom. What are you going to change around? Why don't we do that? Just an individual um, on the steps of the Tower of the Lighthouse, and I was sat with Jeff, and Jeff's um, only this is his second time with Most Haunted with the team. Well, if you guys want to spray out I'm going to spread it further as well. Yeah. I don't want to do so, I'm not just saying. I've got a pen up my bottom at the moment. As soon as we sat down, the, everything started to happen. There was footsteps and, and it was really quite, it was quite freaky. Uh, if there are any ashes here, please make your presence known. I noticed that Jeff is the cameraman and he had all the camera but it was all over the place. He was that scared. He just was like, oh, didn't know what to do. So I took the camera and did the work. Girls, if you're here, get some sounds. Let's hear your voices. Jane. stairs with a little bit too confident probably um, and the footsteps were right next to me in calf. There's something walking right past us. I saw the black mass of something. And then I turned away because I didn't want to look at it. And obviously when I looked back, it's gone. But the footsteps kept coming closer and closer and closer. And I was waiting. In that moment, I was just waiting for it to go past. But it wouldn't go past. It kept going back upstairs. And I could hear the coat, whatever it was it was wearing, brushing against the wall which was just actually freaking me out, to be perfectly honest. And uh, I just don't think I'll be the same again. <sighs> Honestly. If you want to make your presence known, could you maybe try showing yourself, making a sound? There's someone... There, there's something walking right past us. I saw it as well. Oh my god, I thought I thought it was car. Oh god. My battery on the camera, which had a full hundred minutes on it, drained within twenty minutes, which I thought was a bit was a bit strange, so we kind of were sat in the middle. There's Carl at the top, we were in the middle, and the others at the bottom we didn't have any camera. We didn't have a camera, but we heard distinctively the footsteps that came a man's footstep that came down heavy, like, like that, and stop right directly next to us. At the beginning, there was people, it sounds like there was lots going past us, but uh, most of the time they just stopped. And Jeff was getting quite worried because he kept saying, just pass me, just pass me. It was really, really interesting. I definitely, definitely think this is a, worth, a place worth coming back to. It's really, really scary. And then I've got to come back next Thursday, uh, week today, and uh, pick all the equipment up uh, because the helicopter can't come back because it's booked up for a week. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Can't wait. <laughs> right, well, we've, uh, we've now come back from our last vigil. It's been... Um, uh, everyone's in high spirits. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Uh, it's been a brilliant night. It really has. We've had... Um, uh, from last night when we did our uh, vigil alone, right through till tonight, it's been superb. This place has been has delivered in spades. It's come here. You have to come here. Experience this for yourself. 
the place is quite small and I think all of us when we first got here were thinking I wonder if it's going to deliver because the last lighthouse well that was one of my favourite shows that we ever did um, at Suter Lighthouse um, there wasn't a lot of activity so we kind of thought there wasn't going to be a lot here but there's been an immense load we've got some great stuff on uh, audio we've got to go back and look through all the visual stuff so um, it's been great and thank you very much for watching my Sorted Extra and um, uh, join us next week well who knows we may have caught the full manifestation of a ghost and you will be the first to have seen it you've seen it before me I won't even have known that by this time next week but you will night Now, Kieran, is this a first for you? Have you ever investigated a lighthouse before? I've never ever investigated a lighthouse. I've never even visited one, so I'm very excited to be here. I think with any location, though, there's, wherever there's a history of phenomena, it's always spontaneous. We don't know if when we do an investigation, it's going to produce the goods. We've just got to treat it like any normal investigation and see what happens. Because of where we are and the number of shipwrecks that occur, there is this association with death with negative emotion around the lighthouse. You happy? I loved it. I'm happy. You happy? Words, words are okay. Happy? Happy. I'm happy, you're happy, we're all happy. We're just doing an eyewitness in a minute. But what we do, it's important to have is I'm going to get the background. I'm going to get the background of the rock face and the uh, steam. So you're going to have the camera on pretty low, so you can stand up. But then that means we're going to have a lot of light in here to bring up the eyewitness and the uh, foreground. That might be fine. Well, once it went to stand in, it's going to stand in though. I'm not going to put makeup on it, but I'm just going to just take the shine off for a bit. Don't shine off my face, mate. Yeah, this side. So if you stand where I am, I'm looking. Yeah, I don't know. You see this here again? I want, want to try and get rid of that there, so we might have just done that. Again. Okay. You want to cut out? Okay. <laughs> My name is David Stack. I'm the tour guide here for the lighthouse, which means in effect we take people around the lighthouse, explain to them how it works, a bit of the history of it, uh, explanation of the birds, and any other questions that they may have. As soon as we sat down, everything started to happen. There was footsteps, and and it was really quite, it was quite freaky. If there are any ashes here, please make your presence known. I noticed that Jeff is the cameraman and he had all the camera but it was all over the place. He was that scared. He just was like, oh, didn't know what to do. So I took the camera and did the work. Girls, if you're in here, get some sounds. Hear your voices. Jane. stairs a little bit too confident probably um, and the footsteps were right next to me and calf. If you, if you want to 
Someone, there's something walking right past us. I saw the black mass of something. And then I turned away because I didn't want to look at it. And obviously now I look back, it's gone. But the footsteps kept coming closer and closer and closer. And I was waiting. In that moment, I was just waiting for it to go past. But it wouldn't go past. It kept going back upstairs. And I could hear the coat, whatever it was it was wearing, brushing against the wall which was just actually freaking me out, to be perfectly honest. And uh, I just don't think I'll be the same again. <sighs> Honestly. If you want to make your presence known, could you maybe try showing yourself, making a sound? There's someone... There, there's something walking right past us. Yeah, I saw it as well. Oh my God, I thought, I thought it was car. Oh God. My battery on the camera, which had a full 100 minutes on it, drained within 20 minutes, which I thought was a bit, was a bit strange. So we kind of were sat in the middle. It was Carl at the top, we were in the middle, and then the others at the bottom, we didn't have any camera. We didn't have a camera, but we heard distinctively the footsteps that came a man's footstep that came down. After the vigil last night, uh, I was getting ready this morning and I noticed in the, the mirror in the bathroom, remember I had a real pain at one point just around here on my side and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. Well, I had still got the pain this morning and I felt a bit of a lump and just here on my back, I don't know if you can see it, there's a big bruise. Can you see it? Yeah. There. And it looks... It looks to me, it's really small. It looks like a real jab, which is what I felt. I felt that and I went down. But there's a bruise there. I mean, I was talking to Kieran about it. He said, well, you may be fail or put, but you would have noticed it. And the only time I actually felt any pain like that was last night during the vigil. So who knows, was it unseen hands? Warm and above. The, uh, salty, the salty sea air. Humid. Is it so is it just standing here? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to yeah. tell you. Oh, turn the light on. That's what makes it. And... Action! There have been many deaths in and around the lighthouse, from families who have lived and worked here, to shipwreck victims and climbers. So it's no wonder that many of the souls are said to roam all over this place. One of our difficulties tonight will be separating the activity from the ghosts and who is doing what, and more importantly, why. Fantastic. You have a brilliant. That was brilliant. Where we were standing, everybody was, was towards the door, and I felt something come f past me and just <coughs> land like that, right by my feet. I didn't know what it was, and I looked round, shone a torch, and there it was. And I picked it up, it was cold to the touch, and then we put the thermal imager on it, and then Kieran could see my fingerprints, the heat from my fingerprints, but no, no other. So that, to me, proves that no one could have had it in their hands and thrown it, because we would have picked those finger marks up, the heat from that, on the thermal imaging camera. Against the wall, which was just actually freaking me out, to be perfectly honest. And, uh, I just don't think I'll be the same again. Oh, honestly. 
you want to make your presence known, could you maybe try showing yourself, making a sound? Someone, there's something walking right past us. Shit, I saw it as well. Oh my god, I thought, I thought it was car. Oh god. My battery on the camera, which had a full 100 minutes on it, drained within 20 minutes, which I thought was a bit, was a bit strange. So we kind of were sat in the middle. There was Carl at the top, we were in the middle, and the others at the bottom we didn't have any camera. We didn't have a camera, but we heard distinctively the footsteps that came, a man's footsteps that came down heavy, like, like that, and stop right directly next to us. At the beginning, there was people, it sounds like there was lots going past us, but uh, most of the time they just stopped. And Jeff was getting quite worried because he kept saying, just pass me, just pass me. It was really, really interesting. I definitely, definitely think this is uh, worth a place worth coming back to. It's really, really scary. And then I've got to come back next Thursday, uh, week today, and uh, pick all the equipment up uh, because the helicopter can't come back because it's booked up for a week. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Can't wait. <laughs> right, well, we've, uh, we've now come back from our last vigil. It's been... Um, uh, everyone's in high spirits. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Uh, it's been a brilliant night. It really has. We've had... Um, uh, from last night when we did our uh, vigil alone, right through till tonight, it's been superb. This place has been has delivered in spades. It's come here. You have to come here, experience this for yourself. The place is quite small, and I think all of us when we first got here were thinking, I wonder if it's going to deliver because the last lighthouse, although it was one of my favourite shows that we ever did, um, at Suta Lighthouse. Um, there wasn't a lot of activity, so we kind of thought there wasn't going to be a lot here. But there's been. Got no makeup on, feeling like poo. And we're just waiting to find out if we can go to the lighthouse. possibility that we may not get back up but that's not a problem as long as the show gets done some of the, some the steps are stone further down so they will be slippy
that you actually felt like you were going to be blown off course. You sort of blown over and the steps are quite, they're not that, they're kind of like that. And you sort of are pushing you forward. Um, the weird thing is, is the guy just before we went down, I didn't tell the crew, but um, in fact, the only person we knew about it was Stuart. So we, the guy said, I don't think I can let you down. And both said, well, what do you mean you can't let us down? He said, well, if this was open to the public, I'd have shut it today. It's too dangerous, it's too windy. And Stuart and I just looked at each other and said, you know, we're gonna, are we going to pull out now? We've done scary things and this, we've done bigger things than that. So uh, it couldn't have been that bad because we're all down there and no one's dead. Yeah. The last time I witnessed winds like this were at uh, Suta Lighthouse in uh, 